Halo speedrunning is all about using different tricks and strategies to beat the game as quickly as possible. But when you're on a personal best run or potentially a world record run, every single decision you make along the way, including what type of route you end up taking, is absolutely crucial. So when it comes to Halo speedrunning, while some tricks might actually be faster, sometimes tricks end up being deemed too risky to actually be used in a regular speedrun. And today we're teaming up with Halo speedrunner, tricker, and YouTuber Hark the Shark to break down some of the most high stake tricks that are typically avoided by Halo speedrunners. And while Luke, Hark, and I were looking through various different tricks to look into for this video, we found ourselves diving into the speedrunning community and getting in touch with various members with different backgrounds in the Halo speedrunning side of things. They ended up showing us some tricks that if actually pulled off in a real full run could lead to some major implications for the speedrunning scene when it comes to Halo. But before we get into the video, we want to give a huge thanks to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Dragon City is available on iOS and Android for free, and it's a game that lets you build your own dragon empire with thousands of different dragons. You'll have full control over your own dragon city, where you're able to breed dragons and hatch new ones and evolve them. You can also train your dragons in battle and make them even more powerful, and once you feel like your dragons are strong enough to see some action, you're able to fight your friends and other dragon masters in different PvP modes. You can click on the link in the description and get a special free reward, 15,000 food and 30,000 gold along with 10 gems. These rewards are available to new players for seven days. So make sure you check out our link down below. Okay, so the first trick that kind of inspired me to even want to cover this topic in a video actually comes from Halo 2. And this all happened when I was just randomly watching one of Hark the Shark's live streams where he was running some Halo 2 in a race with one of his buddies. And they kept making jokes about attempting the Pelican bump on our outskirts and I had no idea what they were talking about and they did end up attempting the jump a couple of times and it is really interesting. So already on outskirts when you're speedrunning you're running along the rooftops trying to make your way to the hotel Zanzibar as fast as possible and there's this one trick that is a time save of a few seconds where if you just perfectly line yourself up with Johnson's pelican when it spawns in and starts to pass by you can get bumped by the pelican at a really fast rate and land closer to Hotel Zanzibar, thus saving a few seconds on your run. And this trick is pretty cool because you just fly right across the city over some buildings, banking off of the top to make sure you're transferring your speed along the surfaces. But as you could probably assume, a lot could easily go wrong if you don't hit the angle on the pelican exactly perfectly when the pelican is flying in. Getting bumped by the pelican isn't actually the hard part of this trick. The hard part is having just the right luck and precision to make sure that you're flying across the exact angle you need to so that when you hit the building, you're not falling so fast that you fall to your death or just slam into a surface and die. And you also want to be bumped in the direction of Hotel Zanzibar or else you'll just end up losing time on your run. Now, this has been used in individual level runs, but it's never really used when it comes to full game completion speedruns. Switching over to Halo Combat Evolved, there's actually a really cool trick right away on the Pillar of Autumn, and while this trick recently has been done in an individual level run setting the world record by speedrunner Cambit, it's very unlikely that this trick will be popularized and used in world record runs for the full game just because of how long it is to set up and there's some trial and error that goes into getting this trick down just right. Essentially to pull off this trick you have to do what is called a cryo bump where you stand in a specific spot while looking in a specific direction and clip into the game's geometry allowing you to get out outside of the map. However, the real time save is actually once you're outside of the map running alongside the geometry, you can stand right on this specific beam which triggers the loading sequence in the game and teleports you a couple of hallways forward. Overall, it saves you about five seconds, but it is really cool how relevant this is because it has just been a newly implemented strategy. On the next level, Halo, there is a hypothetical trick that could save some time where you would essentially launch the Warthog straight across the light bridge by utilizing grenades and then jumping in to fling yourself across the gap. Obviously, there's a huge risk of dying in the process of doing this, so it hasn't become popularized in any real capacity, though it is interesting that hypothetically this trick 
trick could work and could save time. Now, if we're talking risky plays though, Silent Cartographer takes things to a completely different level with a strategy that's used for the world record run by Chronos, which is absolutely insane, especially considering this is done on legendary difficulty. Essentially, by parking the Warthog down this hallway and using it, of course, to fling yourself right through the doorway, runners can jump down, landing on the geometry just right, as in normal runs of this level, to avoid getting deathly fall damage. And then from there, they can hit the switch and come back to the area where they initially landed. Where things get incredibly impressive, though, is this series of grenade throws that Chronos does and lines up perfectly with a sticky grenade launch where all of the explosions work in unison together to propel the Master Chief all the way back up to the height of where that Warthog was parked in the hallway, and from there, he can essentially grab the passenger seat and clip through the wall without having to go up all of the stairs and the whole section of that level where you typically would have to fight your way up. Then it's just a quick run to the end of the level, and just like that, the world record was clapped. Okay, on Assault on the Control Room, there's this theoretical trick that potentially would save time and become the new speedrunning strat for this level individually if it wasn't so hard to actually set up. Essentially, the fastest way you could potentially complete this level would be to do the trick that causes the Banshee to fall, which is already done in a lot of speedruns, and then from there glitch the Banshee outside of the map and fly ahead through this invisible void in a specific way where you could then jump out of the Banshee and trigger a loading sequence and then backtrack to get to the Banshee I'm not even sure if I'm completely explaining this part right because of how complex this trick seemingly is and having to know where all the triggers are seems to be incredibly important. Speedrunner Burnt actually did a really interesting spliced video showing the trick off and how it could come together and what the timing looks like and it just looks absolutely crazy. The Banshee is out of the map in the cliffs, sometimes it's under the map, sometimes you're running on foot down some hallway but you're also outside of the map and then you have to jump back in the map or clip back in and load back into the map and then fly the Banshee some more. Half the time I don't know what's going on, but it is incredibly impressive. When it comes to Guilty Spark, there's actually a lot of different strategies that can be used on this run that often are overlooked or not used in world record runs. Like for instance, Macronos essentially uses this shade turret to launch himself closer to the main entrance of the structure much faster, but there's a bigger skip known as the Reveal Skip, which is essentially the big reveal showing off the flood, that long cutscene that plays out, you can actually bypass this cutscene and the first encounter you have with the Flood altogether by using a trick to go out of bounds. However, it's done earlier during the elevator sequence instead, and it's a little bit confusing because it almost seems nearly random where and how precise you have to be when going through this sequence. And this trick wasn't even something that was available to do back in the original version of Halo, and it utilizes and abuses geometry that only exists on the anniversary version version of the game to pull off a teleport. So it definitely is incredibly awesome to see this version of the trick pulled off, especially with how much harder it is to manage. And then on the level library, there's a potentially viable skip to the first floor, which would be really cool if it could actually be pulled off. But essentially, Speedrunner Burnt has been looking into the possibility of pulling off a trick where you would essentially teleport up and then use one of the lights to do an incredibly long horizontal teleport, where if this trick was in fact possible, it could could potentially end up saving 40 seconds on a run. Though at this point in time, no one's even been able to pull it off in an individual level just yet. Now, the reason why this trick hasn't been used yet is due to a couple of reasons. And another speedrunner, Sloth SG, actually helped fill in some of the details on this trick for me as to why the viability isn't quite there just yet. But he essentially pointed out that grenades randomly affect Master Chief's looking angle, which affects the pixel that you need to look at for the teleport to actually work. And since that's risky enough, you end up having to rely on a flood carrier form to boost yourself up and apparently the up work is incredibly difficult because you need to get master chief to like twerk or something if you're going to actually hit the required trigger and then there's this whole platforming part on the ceiling which is apparently also awful but nonetheless this is an incredibly impressive hypothetical trick if it ever does become something utilized also before we move off of ce there's apparently a really cool halo
Halo CE segmented run, just like the Halo 3 one I mentioned earlier in the video, coming out in mid-November. So keep an eye out on Halo runs for that. So throughout all of Halo, one trick that comes up from time to time are different types of launches involving the Covenant Shield or Deployable Cover. But on Halo 3's The Ark, we've seen some speedrunners do this pretty big bypass where you could use a Deployable Cover to launch yourself all the way across onto this cliffside and then kind of glide across it, which does save a couple of seconds rather than grabbing a mongoose and driving the whole way. In this case, we see speedrunner Sasquatch doing it, which is really impressive, but apparently it's really challenging also because there is just this random chance that the deployable cover will in fact spawn in this level, and you can run this level multiple times and not even have a deployable cover spawn in, making it not very viable for a speedrunning strategy on a normal basis. There's actually a really awesome Halo 3 project that a lot of members in the Halo Runs community worked on, where they essentially did a Halo 3 segmented run, where various speedrunners came together and essentially came up with the optimal run for Halo 3, and then it was all seamlessly edited together to look like a single run, which is really interesting because it means with Halo 3 in an optimal setting, potentially 13 minutes could be trimmed off of the world record time for Halo 3 across the board if, of course, they didn't have to worry about very difficult tricks like, for instance, the shield bump here killing the entire run along the way. But it's still a really interesting resource to look at if you want to see some inhuman level of gameplay done by people who run Halo 3 all the time. Looking back at Halo 2, there's actually a couple of really interesting tricks here as well beyond just the pelican bump that I thought was really funny. For instance, one big trick that's been very popular across Halo over the years is definitely the sword flying or sword gliding that's been really popular in Halo 2 throughout the years. And you definitely can save a ton of time if you can pull off these tricks with the right accuracy by zooming in, triggering, and using the sword auto lunge to fly way further than you probably should be able to. However, one really interesting level is Halo 2's Delta Halo, because there are two different ways you can essentially approach the level itself. You can either go out of bounds right at the spawn and trigger the loading points where you have to to progress the level and beat the level that way, or you could go a slightly faster way where you wrap around the inside part of the level and then sword lunge across this massive gap, saving a little bit of time. Now, of course, the problem is sword lunging isn't always the most consistent trick to be able to pull off. And in a scenario like this, the penalty of death if you fall off the map or failing a sword lunge is definitely not worth it here, especially on higher difficulties where you also have to be paying attention to enemies that are shooting at you and everything just has to kind of go perfectly where if you go the other way, you have the cover of being outside of the map for a bit to not have to worry about enemies just gunning you down. In Halo 3 ODST, Hark actually has an amazing trick that works on Mombasa Streets 1, which is called the Brute Pressure Launch. Now, essentially, when you're running through Mombasa Streets, there's this one sequence where two brutes are trying to attach the bomb to the engineer. And essentially, while this is happening, they're in an animated script. And Hark managed to figure out that during this animated script, it actually offsets their hitboxes. So if you bring your ODST and perfectly line it up in the middle of the offset hitboxes, at the end of the animation, when the hitboxes are reset, it ends up resulting in this amazing pressure launch, which is absolutely insane and just launches the rookie through surfaces, out of bounds, all the way across, and then back in bounds, where then you can open up the door, leading you up to where you would normally trigger the beginning of Uplift Reserve, which is probably one of the most insane tricks because it actually saves about 70 overall seconds on Mombasa Streets 1 since this is the part of Mombasa Streets before you have a vehicle that can help you speed along the process. Now, of course, this is a trick that does take quite a bit of precision to pull off, and despite the fact that it can save 70 seconds, if something isn't lined up exactly perfectly, you can end up not launching correctly or not launching at all, and you end up losing the time trying to get the perfect run set up where this launch ends up working. So unfortunately, despite the fact that it saves over a minute, it doesn't end up 
actually getting used in ODST runs. Okay, and while we're at it, we'll also talk about Uplift Reserve because Hark has this amazing trick as well here. And if I'm understanding this correctly, this is probably one of those one and 10,000 type scenarios, but essentially, typically when running Uplift Reserve, you just drive ahead as quickly as you can, and jump in the ghost, do a couple of shortcuts over the mountains, and you can get a pretty fast time without too much of a learning curve. But Hark somehow managed to find out that you can grenade and brute shot launch the Warthog in the opening area out of bounds, and if you can launch yourself and the Warthog both correctly to land up on the upper platform, that includes the Warthog not rolling off or you missing the jump, and of course you're doing it at the optimal time, which essentially is first try without messing up on the way to the part where you do this launch, you then potentially could drive all the way to the very end of the level as the only trigger that matters on Uplift Reserve for this specific trick is the end trigger. Now at this point, this is just a hypothetical speedrun scenario. This trick would save about 10 seconds over the overall best time if the trick can be pulled off on its very first try, yet no one has been able to do it just yet. And so at this point, this trick is actually just a theoretical speedrun strategy and not something that's been able to be implemented just yet, as the odds of getting this on your first try are very, very slim. It's an incredibly difficult trick to manage to pull off. Still, sometimes the theoretical tricks are some of the most interesting ones until someone finally comes around and is actually able to pull it off. Actually, Hark has a really cool, easy, segmented commentary video on his channel where you can see all of these tricks in ideal situations for ODST. We'll link that in the description and remind you guys to check it out at the end of the video. Over on the Halo Reach side of things, there are some tricks that are completely mind-blowing. And some of these tricks are incredibly interesting. Now, speedrunner Dice Flux has been able to pull off these tricks in individual level runs, but so far, no one has actually been able to incorporate these tricks into an entire run for the full campaign, likely because of how difficult it is. For instance, on Tip of the Spear, there's actually a way you can bypass the entire auto-scroller part where you're riding in the Falcon, shooting at the enemies, and just essentially waiting for the Falcon ride to be over before you progress in your run. However, if we look at the individual level world record, which is just 4 minutes and 54 seconds long, we can pretty easily see why this is not something that's normally attempted in full runs of the game. Dice Flex sets this trick up by pinning the Falcon that you normally ride on in the corner, and then essentially to get this entire trick to work, you have to bait two elites to follow you over to the Falcon and have one of them, luckily enough, hijack you when you're in the turret seat of the Falcon, and then right after he throws you out, the other elite has to hijack the pilot of the Falcon. If done in the right timing, you can then jump and hijack the Falcon and fly yourself through the part where you typically would be shooting from the turret. The huge time save obviously being just flying right past the slow auto-scrolling part, skipping everything and still hitting the loading sequences in the right order, essentially allowing you to fly straight up to the tip of the spire. This actually saves about 40 seconds already, which is huge, and no one's even been able to pull it off on legendary difficulty. But if you already thought it was challenging enough, there's one more kicker that adds an extra level of difficulty, which is the ending of the level. Once you've been in the Falcon through this whole part and you fly it up to the top, the only way you can actually get out of the Falcon is to get hijacked again by an elite, which means while the time is ticking down, you're essentially completely reliant on a third elite AI to rush out and hijack you out of the Falcon so that you're then free to clear out this last section and end the level overall. It's incredibly impressive to watch, but definitely execution probably is a really big pain. But when it comes to Halo Reach, Dice Flex is kind of starting to establish himself as this hybrid speedrun and trick runner at the same time because he also had the former world record and current second place record time on Nightfall, which already is a level that players have been able to beat in such a short amount of time because of a simple forklift glitch allowing you to clip through a wall and bypass a large section of the level. However, more recently, a new strategy has been used which essentially has a ton of luck involved where you would need to armor lock, which hilariously enough just zooms June completely across the level and across this gap, landing players on top of this rock. Now, obviously, there's a lot of precision and 
randomness to how the launch will end up going. And it's one of those tricks you just have to run over and over and over again, hoping that you have the right type of pressure launch to bring you in the right place where you can just easily gap the wall without having to even use the forklift. It saves 10 seconds, which is great in individual level runs, but it hasn't been adapted into full runs just yet because of the randomness of it, where 10 seconds isn't necessarily worth having to restart your entire run. At least not yet. Okay, and then Pillar of Autumn actually has a really unique trick, which in this example is done by one Dayton. And mind you, he's pulling this off on legendary difficulty, which is already close to impossible for an individual level run, but essentially more commonly used in easy difficulty individual level runs of Pillar of Autumn. If you throw two plasma grenades right before you get into the Mac gun, you can potentially spawn kill a bunch of brutes that jump out of a phantom, which saves some time that you would normally have to wait for the phantom to fly up and get into view of the Mac gun. Now, while this has been achieved in individual level runs on easy difficulty, the legendary run was seemingly impossible, at least for time saving purposes, until one day one Dayton was able to actually pull off this trick while doing an individual level run of Pillar of Autumn. And with the trick being possible, it meant the door was open for the legendary speedrun time for the individual level to be taken, which apparently took over 3,000 attempts of Pillar of Autumn to finally get a legendary deathless run, which would be enough to save time and take the world record. And his reaction for pulling off this incredible feat is surprisingly nonchalant. There it is. Halo 4 has some really interesting tricks that are not used in overall runs either. Like for instance, on Forerunner, the ghost run, there is a pretty risky shortcut that you can do with the ghost where you go out of bounds at the end of the run. Now, overall, it only saves about six seconds, but because of the high risk to this day, no one's actually managed to pull it off in even an individual level run, let alone an entire full game run of Halo 4. Matter of fact, Halo 4 actually has a couple of different strategies strategies that to this day have not been implemented into either an individual level run or a full run that still theoretically would be faster than doing it the quote unquote safer way. Like on the level reclaimer, there's actually a way that you can launch your tank completely over the blue shield at the very end, which not only looks hilarious, but also would potentially be a really good time save. It could possibly lead to new world records, but with it being so late in the level, which is already a lengthy ish level, the viability of doing an entire run just to have your good time ruined by not being able to get this launch off on the first try definitely is a reason why it isn't utilized just yet. Now, interestingly enough, in Halo 4, shutdown is one of the shortest levels in the entire game for speedrunning, since you literally can just bypass the first and second towers and go straight to the third tower by flying right around this little wall. There's already strategies and tricks to speed up the process of skipping most of the indoor section in this area. Area. However, there's a god launch that you can actually do, which requires some very pinpoint accuracy and some good luck along the way to be able to manage to land this to get an even shorter version of the run, of the already short speedrunning strat here. Now, this trick does pop up from time to time in individual level runs of shutdown, but to this day, the Master Blaster himself, Zombie343, is the only one who's managed to pull it off in a full game run. Everyone else usually skips implementing this strategy as a part of their overall run just because it's a bit too risky. There's also another trick on Composer where you can essentially launch yourself with this Phantom, which would speed you along the level quite a bit faster, though it is incredibly difficult to set up, which has become an unpopular route for people who speedrun the level composer, though theoretically, if someone was to incorporate this route into their run, it would be a little bit faster than the speedrunning strategies that are used now. Though the setup time and the RNG behind it makes it an unpopular choice for people who are running the level. And then when it comes to Halo 5, there are a couple of little interesting tricks that aren't used either. Like for instance, on the level Glast, there is this really cool door launch that you can do, which would save you quite some time, though it's incredibly difficult to actually manage to pull this one off. And on the mission, The Breaking, there's this crazy fast pressure launch to skip the end section of the level, though with how difficult it is to set up and then on top of that, manage 
managed to have the pressure launch launch you in the right direction, it obviously gets overlooked and not used whenever Halo 5 speedrunners are doing full runs of the game. Park the Shark also has a really interesting speedrunning trick on Floodgate, where essentially by utilizing three different deployable covers, you can zoom through this level incredibly fast. Now it looks pretty confusing, but essentially by gaining momentum by moving within the fields of the deployable cover, the game tries to force the player out of that area, which in turn can do some tricks that are very, very surprisingly speedy. I don't know, it's just really interesting to see how Hark is able to pull off two deployable cover launches and a deployable cover clip where he goes right through a wall to bypass through this level. And honestly, it makes sense that Hark the Shark is able to pull off a lot of these tricks because he kind of has this reputation of discovering and exploring things about the Halo games that no one ever thought would be discovered or even possible. Possible. And actually, to take it a step further, Hark was telling us about a very interesting hypothetical speedrunning trick that could potentially save a ton of time on Halo 3's The Covenant, though at this stage it's just a theoretical possible launch that maybe in a perfect world would in fact save a ton of time. But we're going to go ahead and let Hark explain that one here. Hello everybody. So first off, I would like to thank uh, the speedrunning legend Danza for coming up with this speedrunning trick idea. This is a trick idea that a lot of people have put a lot of time into, and unfortunately no one's been able to successfully pull this trick off in a way that saves time, but hopefully that might change at some point. So to start things off with this hypothetical trick, uh, you would want to get a deployable cover from the AA Wraith at the start of the level. And once you get inside the first tower and clear all the enemies, you want to make sure that you would get another deployable cover drop as well, and also another piece of equipment so you can juggle uh, one of the deployable covers to this wall over here. And then after you hit the first tower cutscene, you want to get set up next to the deployable cover that you left at the wall, and then you would deploy a cover clip out the first tower, like so. And after you deploy a cover clip out the first tower, you should have the other DC that you left at the wall, and you want to make your way down this little slant and get next uh, to the invisible wall. Once you're at the wall, you would do another deployable cover launch, and the goal would be to try to bounce around uh, the back inside of all the towers and whatnot because the invisible wall is a little bit circular, so you want to bounce around in a circle and reach the third tower where there is a hidden load zone that loads the regular third tower area. But the unfortunate part is that it's really, really, really hard to bounce around all these walls without losing a lot of speed. And the goal would be to keep as much speed as possible into the load zone so that you can carry your momentum all the way over to the tower so you can continue the level. Losing speed thing is a big reason why this trick hasn't been pulled off in a manner that saves time yet. Me and many other speedrunners believe it is probably more than likely possible to save time with the trick. And so yeah, hopefully uh, at some point that will happen. And yeah, with that, I think I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you. Yeah, so it's really cool to see this trick, and it's definitely something we'd really like to see into the future. But if you aren't already subscribed to Hark the Shark, make sure you go over to his channel, link in the description, and subscribe, because he uploads a ton of really awesome speedrunning videos, or other unique tricks like the popular AUP trick from Halo 2, and he was an absolute huge help in bringing this video together. Also, seriously, once again, huge thank you to all of these people who helped in this video as well. I had so many questions. And also, I know neither Luke and I are good enough to pull off all of these tricks, so the loan of some footage clips was very appreciated as well. And also, if you're not subscribed to Rocket's Loth already, it would really mean the world to us. That'd be neat. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching. That's it for today. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.